This video is dedicated to the why we chose and how we fitted the solar panels we have and more importantly do they work. It shows the fixing method and the results of the installation we the wattage achieved. There is a link to the panel supplier and the Victron agent in New Zealand attached to the video. This video is part of the caravan series. If you enjoy the video, please don't forget to press the subscribe, ring the bell, press the like button and leave comments and ask questions as required. This video is dedicated to the why we chose and how we fitted the solar panels we have and more importantly, do they work? At the time I was researching solar panels I was consistently told to avoid new technology. The panels I purchased were right at the edge of that new technology. I researched these panels as much as I could given there was limited information available that was not from the manufacturer. I started with the company High Tech Systems High Tech Solar New Zealand Limited. They appeared to stand by their product and develop their product in New Zealand. They are not affiliated with High Tech Global, which is an IT provider in China. Anyway, I purchased seven panels, feeling happy with my research and a lengthy conversation with the owner over the phone. The glue we used to attach these panels was Seeker 221. It is important to ensure you have enough foot area to adequately secure the panel based on the holding power of the glue. I used a safety factor of 10. I built an anodized feet, each with an area of 10,000 square millimeters on the glue surface with the intention of six of these be used per panel. This clip is of me drilling the panel to take the feet so that the panel can be easily removed if needed. Each panel is fitted with rib nuts to allow simple removal. I bought 215 watt Perk Mono 72 cell half cut technology N type bifacial cells with tunnel oxide technology. Bifacial means these panels have internal light reflectors for increased performance. Basically, you can use the wasted UV on a returning bounce wave. With built in mirror reflector inserts plus bifacial cells, the cells in this panel should give the best low light production possible with early morning and late afternoon yields of much more than an acceptable amount. Fitted with high quality split junction boxes and two bypass diodes, the top half of the panel operates independently from the bottom half of the panel. So if there's any shading on the top half, this does not affect the bottom half and vice versa. This panel has four-way anti-shade protection. Unlike traditional 36 cell panels, which where if you cover one to two full cells, the entire panel would drop below 5%. With this panel, you avoid this issue. This panel was designed exclusively by High Tech Solar New Zealand. We were told what for what this panel produces more daily output power than a standard mono or poly 280 watt panel. And I believe it does. In November 2023, we are producing power from 6.30am some mornings through to 7.30pm in the afternoon. 2.30pm to 3.30pm is about the highest yield generally. Since we bought these 215 watt panels, they have been replaced with a new 240 watt version of the same physical size, but even higher efficiency. We were among the first to purchase this product in October 2021. This was an unproven in the market panel at the time, but I felt worth the trial, and it has exceeded my expectations, I must admit. These were not fitted until August 2023 in, in the end due to delivery delays with our van. This is how I installed my panels to our van. It is not intended to portray preferred good practice or accepted normal practice. The problem with solar roof installations, there are many variables to consider and many opinions in the market. This is, however, how my panels are fitted.
To install each panel we placed them into the correct configuration as I had detailed on a drawing I created of the van roof. I drew around the foot locations with about 50mm excess all round. Each foot position was first washed with soapy water, cleaned with white spirits and then scuffed with a coarse green scour cloth also soaked in white spirits. The area was again cleaned with white spirits and left to dry. The panel feet were also cleaned with white spirits and left to dry. The foot positions on the van roof were coated with seeker activator as were the panel feet. The van roof was coated with polish between the foot positions to make polishing once the glue was dry easier. The panel feet were coated with copious amounts of glue. You do not want to be shy with this product to obtain good bonding. And then the panel was placed into position. Weights were placed across the panel frame for 48 hours while the glue cured. This was done for all seven panels. Kurt took on the task of attaching the cables to the panels. The configuration is three sets of parallel wired panels. Two sets of two panels with a theoretical 430 watt solar uptake and one set of three panels in parallel at a theoretical 645 watt solar uptake. This would in theory be a maximum solar uptake of 1505 watts. From past solar installations I have done, I know the usual best I have received on a regular basis is around 80% of the stated panel performance.
Kurt made solder connections to each panel set with plugs at the panel positions for simple disconnection if required. All panel positives were combined and all panel negatives were combined for each parallel set. Only six wires go back to the Victron controllers, reducing the number of penetrations. Kurt fitted the wiring for the panels through the van and up to the bed frame entering behind the cupboards, under the fridge, beside the wheel arch and finally up under the bed. While Kurt was busy with the solar wiring, I fitted the Ethernet cable and video cable for the touchscreen around the top of the cupboards and some small cable trunking. Once all of that was complete, the installation was ready. I have been monitoring this installation now for almost three months. This photo is the look from above and the following is the result happening during operation. These results are from the 6th of November and the day started very foggy but improved later on. It is still an extremely cloudy day. This is a look out the window of the van. It is 8 o'clock in the morning and as you can see the sun is partially obscured by trees with low hanging fog around. At this time the panels are producing 350 watts from 1505 watts or 23% of their stated maximum production. It is now 1.30 p.m. and solar production since 1 p.m. has been above 1200 watts, or as an average 80% of the theoretical solar maximum. Less than a minute later, and still around 1.30 p.m., solar production hits 1562 watts. Not only is this above the panel stated maximum, but the general solar uptake is above 1400 watts currently. It is astounding how well these panels perform. Cloud will eventually make this rate drop off, but in my history of boats and solar, this uptake of solar would only be a dream. Most panels I have dealt with in the past, and most solar controllers, given we are using Victron product, purported to be the best available as a combination, would give me close to the panel maximum, and only very rarely. The time this is holding at maximum has never been seen by myself on other solar installations I was involved with. 